Welcome to the Killer Boobies podcast, unraveling breast implant illness, sharing stories of women who went from victim to victor, interviewing doctors with their insight, and sharing hope and tools to reclaim health. Here's your hosts, Wendy Bunnell, Leslie Smoot, and Brandy Vega. And as always, we want to make sure you know that this podcast is not intended for the purpose of providing medical advice. All information, content, and material of this podcast is for informational purposes only. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Killer Boobies podcast. I'm Leslie Smoot, your host, and I am today with Karen Maletti. And Karen has done the most amazing video of her journey and her experience with breast implant illness. I came across this online, and I'm going to share the screenshot with you in a minute so that you can find her video um, because it's a pretty remarkable story of how she figured out that she was experiencing breast implant problems and what she did about it and then what happened to her when she removed the implants and what her health is like now. Um, Karen, I'm so excited to have you today. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about this. I'm really excited about it. And I love the name of the podcast. I get a kick out of it. I think this is wonderful. (laughs) You know what? We wanted something that was catchy. And we also need to point out that literally it is wrecking people's lives. And that the fact that we call it killer boobies was not an accident. That was intentional because it really is, people are really suffering from it. Um, But we wanted it catchy. We wanted people to remember it. And so it's a little bit... um, catchy and in your face. (laughs) That's all right. We're okay with that. We need to talk about it. And so we want to get people talking. Um, Karen, your movie has probably been seen by a lot of people. And I'm imagining you've had a lot of women reach out to you, but I want to know what has been the response and what's been your experience once you shared your personal story? Yeah. So the response was actually really overwhelming. Um, from both genders too, male and female. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised how many men actually reached out to me and gave me support through it. And then also reached out to me and saying, my wife or my partner or my best friend is also going through this. Can I share your story with them? And I'm like, absolutely. That's why I put it out there. I put it out there to help inspire, educate, and also support other women going through this because before I found out about this, I had no idea what was wrong with me. You know, I thought I was a hypochondriac and I was just so sick all the time and I didn't know why or what was going on. So, you know, I was very blessed and fortunate to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And now I felt a moral obligation to put that out there to help other women too. So the response has been amazing. There's been it, that video was posted uh, maybe a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, and I'm still to this day getting people reaching out to me, uh, asking Good. questions. So it's exciting. Good. I think that's great. I want to share with everybody what this looks like, and maybe you could please tell everyone what um, what where they need to go online in order to find this movie that you created, The Truth About Breast Implants. Yeah, so you can get it in two different places. You can go to my Instagram, which is underscore Karen, or it's, I'm sorry, it's at Karen underscore Monetti, M-O-N-E-T-T-I, or my business website, which is this is B-O-D-H-I dot com forward slash breast implant illness. So those are the two spots the video is in. Yeah, because if we go to your blog, then you give some really good details about your journey and uh, your recovery, too. So do you want to give us a quick little synopsis or summary of what your journey was about, just to let people know what's in the video and what they'll learn? Sure. So I really just went into what I was experiencing for so long um, and all of the symptoms that I had not knowing why, because I'm in the health, I'm in the health world. I'm a nutritionist by trade. I'm a fitness competitor. I live a very healthy, holistic lifestyle. And I was so sick. So the video went into all of what I've been experiencing for 
10 years. Um, I had my implants for 13 years, but out of those 13, I was really sick for 10 on wow. and off, no matter what I was doing. So I went into that. And then the end of the video just goes into a quick little like how I'm feeling now, because I did this video only like two months after my surgery. Yeah. So two months post explant. I'm now just shy of a year and a half post explant. So from that video to now, life is so much different even from then. So. Oh, well, yeah. congratulations for being out so far from your surgery. I think you were one of the early adapters because I mean, a lot of women are still just barely hearing about it. This is still a new um, phrase, breast implant illness. It's still a new thing because when I talk to a lot of uh, other women, have they ever heard of this? They'll say, no, I haven't. And um, there, will, there are also a lot of women that um, approach me as well being also in a world of nutrition and they'll say oh I'm sick with this 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 and this and I'll say gosh have you do you have implants in and it's a complete shock to them that I would even ask that question because their first initial reaction is what in the world could that have to do with my sickness is that what you thought also when you were first looking into it yeah, actually, it's interesting. My husband tagged me in a post of a woman, a very big influencer in the business world, who shared her story. And I looked at the post and like, good for her. I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, they don't hurt. They're not misplaced. Like, this is weird. Like, why is he doing that, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I suffer from insomnia, and that was a big symptom of what I had going on, too. So, so I was up one night and I'm like let me just read into this a little bit more let me look at her post she had a bunch of links I followed her links and for like two weeks straight I was up until like two three o'clock in the morning every night reading and researching and then I was watching movies and then I bought books and I was like my world was changed yeah. in that moment so yeah same thing I was like there's no way this is causing that like I was told they were safe I have saline I'm mm -hmm. fine you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> how naive we all are because we just don't know we're right. told one thing when really it's um it's really not a good thing so it's interesting I also ask women right away too and sometimes they're a little taken back by that question so like how dare you ask me yeah it's such a private thing sure you know and I'm um, like it's okay like you can tell me, and this is why I'm asking this question, but I get that same reaction from a lot of women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you being a person who's a nutritionist and who coaches people with nutrition, um, you're also a bodybuilder and you were in the thick of bodybuilding competitions when your health started to take a dive. So I want to show everybody just how far you have taken your competitions because you've been a great success in your field, but maybe you can tell us about your experience here and then what was happening with you health-wise. Um, sure. You find your photo. Tell us about this and what the competition was and what you were, yeah. what you won for doing that here. Can you see it now? I could. It just gives me the chills every time I see this picture. Um, so this was 2011. I'm a drug-free WMBF pro figure competitor. So I started competing in 2004 before my implants. Mm -hmm. Once I started competing, I really had a lot of self-image issues because I was completely flat from the lack of body fat, so I got my implants. This picture was 2011. Uh, it was the day that I won the pro world, so I'm a world champion um, competing oh my you know, with people women all over the world. Thank you. Yeah. This was my most proud moment in my career. But it's interesting because this was 2011. 2009 is when I started getting extremely ill. Mm -hmm. um, and I found out that I had celiacs and I couldn't tolerate dairy. So my health started declining in the digestive side of things in 2009 uh -huh. that I had to actually stop competing for two years because I physically couldn't even get to a gym. I was so sick no matter what I was eating, what I wasn't eating, my hair was starting to fall out. I was having a lot of issues. And um, I sought out an acupuncturist um, that helped me with my nutrition and helped me with my internal system, got yeah. me healthy again. And I came back and I, I, um, 
I dominated the stage that year. I won three major pro titles back to back, drug free, meaning no oh steroids, no enhancements. I get urine tested. I get polygraphs before my shows and after my shows. So it was a, just a lot of hard work and dieting. Yeah, and that is quite an accomplishment to take your body to the level. And I just want to applaud you on what you were able to do. I need to double applaud you because not only did you win and not only did you look amazing, but you also did it and you weren't feeling well. You did it before and after, like before you were sick and even after you became sick. So I know you really had to master your body in order to accomplish that. And I, I think that that is really great. So I just wanted to say congratulations on your accomplishment. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> yeah, but it must have been frustrating to know so much about health and wellness and to know your body so well and then to have it not respond the way that it had responded in the past. Super. Yeah, it started getting to the point where I really thought I was a hypochondriac. So I'm like, how, how does somebody take care of themselves so well, spends, mm -hmm. you know, eat organically, I exercise, I sleep, I, you know, I go see a chiropractor, a functional medicine doctor, I have an acupuncturist. How do I do all of this? Yet I am so sick. And I know people who don't eat good at all and they eat sugar and crap and they don't work out and they're perfectly healthy. I'm like, right. This doesn't make any sense. What's going on? Why, why am I going through this? Never realizing or even thinking it, it could be implants. Yeah. Uh, it was weird. Yeah. 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 I think that is remarkable. But nevertheless, you did change your diet because you couldn't eat anymore. You said you were diagnosed celiac. Is that right? Uh, well, I know. Yes. I have nine out of the 10 symptoms of a celiac. Mm. So I never actually went through the endoscopy because at that point I had removed it out of my diet because every time I ate it, I was violently ill. And my, uh, I called up a doctor and they're like, well, we can test you for it, but you have to start eating it again to have it present. I'm like, oh, wait a second. Yeah. I'm I know exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. I am not going to ingest it just for you to tell me, oh, you're allergic to it. You know? And again, I went the natural way of it. My acupuncturist helped me. I had a chiropractor help me. We did the process of elimination. And I know there's a big difference between sensitivity yeah. and allergy when it comes to a food. And there's difference between being celiac and then just having a food sensitivity. And the reason I say I'm celiac is because I am nine out of the 10 classic symptoms of celiac, um, where it doesn't just affect my digestion, it affects every part of my being. Um, it, like really bad for like, if I even get cross contaminated, mm -hmm. I'm affected for a week. Like it's, it's really bad, so. Okay. And so that maybe hasn't changed since you've had your implants removed. Yeah. I'm not sure mm -hmm. because I am, go so there. Has, <laughs> I won't even go there. You know what it's been, I've been um, gluten-free since 2009. Mm -hmm. So implants or not, I don't feel that I need it in my diet yeah. anyway, because holistic and functional medicine says anti-inflammatory foods, right? That's yeah. when our bodies can be the most healthiest anyway. Mm -hmm. And gluten is so inflammatory, there's no need for it in my diet. Mm -hmm. And it's been so long that because I haven't had it for so long, I'm sure I'm sensitive to it regardless now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something that I never wanted to bring back in. I don't even want to test those waters. It's not worth it yeah. to me. Yeah, really. Oh, I totally understand. Well, I liked in the movie how you took us right through the process of coming to terms with the fact that you needed to remove your, ex your implants and that they were harming you and that you went ahead and had explant surgery and removed the capsule as well as your implant. Um, and then you tell me about your recovery and the difference that you noticed after you received your explant surgery. Okay. So again, I'm one of those blessed ones, I feel, because not every woman feels so good right away. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I came out of surgery, and as soon as, you know, the um, anesthesia wore off and I got home, I felt this surge of energy that I haven't had in so long. I'm talking years. 
months and years. And I just felt so good. It was so funny because that night I just kept talking. My husband's like, you haven't shut up since you come out of surgery. He's like, what the heck's going on? I was like, I, feel brand new. <laughs> I just felt so great. Yeah. And, um, you know, my recovery again, I'm so blessed. Like even three days later, I was walking my dog and it was such a beautiful day. And I took a deep breath and it was the first time I remember breathing without pain and without restriction. And I'm an athlete. My cardiovascular system is very strong and healthy. And I always had this restriction taking breaths. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was like three days later. I, I was just outside. I was like, and I took this breath and I was like, Oh my God. I don't have any restriction. Yeah. This is like so weird and incredible and like something we take for granted because yeah. we live so long with that restriction. We don't know any difference. Right. And that was really powerful for me. And it was so short after my surgery. Mm -hmm. um, this picture we're showing right now is the first one. I look really sick and miserable. That was the day I got my consultation with my plastic surgeon to get my explant. Okay. I was so sick. I actually have a lot of makeup on in that picture because my complexion was gray and I had purple bags under my eyes. And I think I was just so toxic yeah. and I wasn't able to handle any food. I even became allergic to almost every vegetable out there. Um, and, and vegetables are super important. You know, you know I was able to yeah, I think that is so fascinating because the same thing happened to me. I was, um, not able to eat things that w you would consider healthy. Um, I remember like coconuts and coconut oil, anything coconut, which I was consuming because I was dairy free and um, I couldn't tolerate the coconut. So why do you think you couldn't tolerate the vegetables? Was this just, just did it destroy your GI system? Yeah. I mean, I had, um, so I had so many digestive issues, uh, before I had the explant that I went to my functional medicine doctor and we did, a, a couple rounds of stool tests and blood tests to see what was going on in my system. Yeah. And my blood test re, um, came back that I was having negative reactions on a blood level to like carrots and kale and lentils and sweet potatoes and avocado and bananas and walnuts. And I'm like, like, what am I going to eat? Like it was even broccoli and I, broccoli is my favorite. <laughs> uh, you know, and it, it was like so weird that like every single thing I was consuming, I was having negative reactions to. Um, and you know, I wasn't able to go to the bathroom or I was having diarrhea. I was swollen. I looked like I was pregnant. I was, my hair was falling out. I was balding. Like it was just weird, you know? And, um, yeah, it was because I mean, I was so toxic because your immune system can only handle so much toxicity. And when you have a foreign object in your body, your immune system attacks it constantly because it's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much fight that your immune system has in it before it starts to shut down elsewhere. And as, um, and the whole thing with breast implant illness is that exactly it's, we have this these foreign objects in our body and our immune system is like, well, I have to protect you as a human being. So I got to fight this off. And that takes a lot of energy and a lot of your immune functioning to the point it wears you down where you start to have autoimmune diseases or issues that resemble autoimmune diseases. And digestion is one of the first things that go. You well, know, um, I'm so glad you explained it that way because that makes a lot of sense. It really does because people want to know, has my, why is my body betraying me? Why is it shutting down? And yet it makes sense if you have a foreign object in your body, your body is going to be in constant attack mode as long as that object is there. And so when it's been going on for years, it's just going to slowly drain you until you don't have much left. So and you get so sick. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to hear about your recovery and how it changed you. Did those illnesses go away? And what, what you learned from that, like how you learned to help your body detox and recover? Yeah. Good questions. So my recovery was pretty fast, like I said, and I think it was because I put so much stress on how healthy I was beforehand. Mm -hmm. But post-surgery, it was interesting. I stopped eating meats and I stopped eating animal protein before my surgery because again, everything was bothering me. 
once I got out of my surgery and my body started to recover, I literally started to crave protein again. Mm -hmm. So I honored that. I learned to like listen to my body and honor that and not fight it anymore. Yeah. So I went back to eating animal protein, high quality animal protein. I don't eat, you know, pounds of it a day, but I do incorporate it. And I think that really helped me personally um, facilitate my, my recovery a lot more. I started feeling way stronger from eating that way, but I also pumped my body up with so many probiotics and um, vegetables. I was doing green powders, I was doing whole vegetables. Um, so the mix between the vegetables and the, the animal protein really helped. Mm -hmm. I started eating a lot of soups with collagen in it too, because mm -hmm. uh, collagen is a wonderful amino acid and it's really good for immune functioning. Uh -huh. hair, skin, all of that. So I started doing a lot of soups post-surgery also, and I really watched my sugar intake. Mm -hmm. My sugar intake was really low. Even, you know, um, I, I mean, I eat fruits, and I will always eat fruits, but I didn't overdo it in any one of those senses. Yeah. I really stressed my carb intake coming in from millets and buckwheats and quinoas and then all the vegetables. So even the grains I was picking were really good and really powerful kind of grains. Um, but honestly, I just went back to my normal eating pattern, just bringing back the foods that I wasn't able to eat anymore in small oh, doses changed. and quantity. Yeah, so that changed for you. The things you were intolerant to, you were able to tolerate, and so you were able to rebuild your body from a really solid nutritional stand, it sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah. It was so nice to be able to eat vegetables again and not have reactions to them. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really like, it's crazy. We take that for granted. Right. But, um, yeah, that was, that was really important. So I went back to actually eating, you know, three really solid balanced meals every day and then my little snacks in between. And, you know, I still have chocolate every day and whatever, it's a little piece here and there, but, uh, you know, I just made sure that I was slowly introducing, um, all those foods back in. Yeah, this is really interesting. The picture on the left of me straight on was the day before my surgery. And I don't know if you can see, I had makeup here, but I was so swollen in my face. Um, that picture to the right was about, that was New Year's, New Year's Eve. So that was four months after my surgery and the swelling, just the swelling and the lightness in my eyes. Right. I'm wearing the same makeup, by the way, in both pictures, because I never changed my makeup products. Okay, um, great. So it's really interesting to see just how different uh, that looks and how much different I felt. Even like the puffiness in my nose and my cheeks, it all went down. And I was eating double the amount of food post-surgery than I was pre- because I can handle it all now. <laughs> so my calories went up, yeah. my nutrition went up, the right. amount of vitamins and minerals I was absorbing went up, yet my weight went down and all the inflammation went away in my yeah. body, it was incredible. Yeah, I think that's the important part is the fact that the inflammation went away. And that's what we're noticing with a lot of people who have the explant surgery is that that inflammation goes away. But what I really like is your nutritional perspective because you just have such a solid foundation on what the body needs to recover. So if you were going to coach somebody through this, because I know you do coach people and you help with them with their nutritional needs, where, what, what would you pinpoint for people going through eggplant surgery, both before and after surgery, as what they need to be doing and having at the top of their mind? That's a great question. I think the first thing to do pre explant is to really start focusing on a diet that has a lot of anti-inflammatory foods in it and get rid of the dairies, the glutens, even if it's a short period, because when your body's so toxic, those add toxicity even more and they hinder your healing process. So a diet that's extremely rich in fibers, in vegetables, a lot of water, some probiotics, and a lot of greens. I really, really encourage that more than anything else. And soup, I'm a really big soup fan. I think there's so much um, benefit to hot 
soups mm -hmm. that are collagen based. So bone broth, collagen based. Um, yeah. They're wonderful for your immune system. So before your surgery, I always recommend just starting to pump your body with as many nutrient dense foods that you possibly can get in because you're going to need everything for the healing process and to really pull back your gluten and your dairy as much as you possibly can. There's a lot of great alternatives out there now that we don't even need to eat dairy anymore. There's wonderful products That's out true. there. Yeah. You know? um, and water intake is really important too. I would really highly recommend water, 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 and some dandelion root, like really good teas made of dandelion root because dandelion root helps to cleanse the kidneys and the liver and it helps just push everything push everything through. So I'm a really big fan of dandelion root in a tea form. Um, that's so a lot so of that. Too. Yeah, that's so great. I had dandelion tea earlier today for that very reason. So I'm just guessing that after you've had implants for a long time, your liver is going to be a little sluggish and anything like dandelion tea is going to help clean out the liver. And probably all of the things you just mentioned, all the fruits, all the vegetables, all the leafy greens. Um, anything else that's going to help that liver so that it can come back to life? Yeah, milk thistle is a very good supplement too. Um, milk thistle is a liver support, so that one's really great. I'm also a really big fan of glutamine and branched-chain amino acids because they're both important amino acids that we need for everyday functioning and those are responsible for recovery and gut health as well like glutamine is really good for gut health okay um so a nice glutam glutamine does this come in supplement form because i'm not familiar with it and i'll bet a lot of people aren't so how would they find glutamine so glutamine is a powder form mm -hmm. uh, you can get it in a pill i just don't recommend pills when it comes to something like this because it's more easily digestible when it's just in its natural powder it's absorbed quicker and a lot of times those pills have a lot of fillers in it um, so i go with a straight powder if anybody has a question about that i do have a line that i do recommend and promote um, so they can always contact me for that. Yeah. It's a great local company to our, our facility here. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to their facility many times and they do everything in house. There's no overseas um, products coming in. So I like that a lot, but glutamine powder is wonderful for digestion and, and to kind of boost that up along with your, again, collagen powders, your milk thistle, milk thistles in a pill form. I've never seen it outside of a pill form. I take it after every meal. Um, right now, because the interesting thing about implants and, and having explant is even if you feel incredible for six months, your yeah. body's still detoxing even a year later and you'll go through these cycles where you're like, what is going on? And I'm currently going through that right now. I'm going through this another purge and I just had a conversation with my functional medicine doctor two weeks ago. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I have been feeling incredible for a year and I got hit really hard this past December. I'm starting to go through a lot of skin and digestive issues again. And she's really firm on her um, theory and the thought of my body is just going through another cycle because I had them for 13 years. You're not going to rid your body of all that toxicity in 12 months. It's not going to happen. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. Cycle. You're right. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if you've heard this, but I've heard this idea that for every year that you've had the implants in, count on a month in your recovery. So if you've had it for 10 years, 10 months, you know, something along those lines, just because we need to have realistic expectations as we are um, cleaning up our body to think long term and not um, run out of the recovery and then just think it's all done. You know, yeah, it is a roller coaster of a process. And I always tell people, I don't know if you can see it, it says practice patience. Yeah. I think that's one of the most important things because even if you feel good and then like, you know, two weeks later you start feeling really gross, mm -hmm. practice, like be patient, do everything you can and your body will recover from it as long as you don't abuse it and give up in the process. Right. You know? I'm guessing that when you feel bad, that body is dumping the toxins into the bloodstream so that you can excrete them. So is there anything you can do? if you're feeling run down and you think that it's because the body's ready to purge more, is there, do you have like a, 
uh, a binder suggestion or something that might help you um, get that to leave or eliminate from the body? Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the nutrition and some exercise. I do believe in sweating a lot to help purge that out of your system, maybe even sitting in some infrared saunas to again, just excrete it through that way. But I'm gonna go back to water, mm. probiotics, milk thistle, dandelion root, and a bunch of greens. <laughs> like you just, yeah, you gotta build your body up on a nutrient level to allow it to be strong enough to you know kick anything out and it's going to run through your system regardless mm -hmm. uh, but if you can support your body with a lot of good nutrition it's just going to make it a little bit stronger and maybe a little bit quicker for you i think that's great and i hope everyone had a pen and pencil and if not rewind this and take notes because that's the formula and i wanted to put this picture up because you look so adorable and you look so happy and I want to hear, you know, how do you, how do you feel now compared to before? And yes, you also had a physical change. I mean, we saw you in your competition outfit and you had bigger breasts. Now, now you have adorable small breasts. How do you feel? So I went through a roller coaster with this too, as I'm sure that most women do. The reason we get the implants is because we have a self-confidence issue, right? We don't feel like we have enough. Um, you know, society tries to put these pressures on us of, you should have curves if you're a female. And, you know, so I got my implants because of that. I started competing and I had no chest and I didn't like, I didn't feel like I was a woman. So I got my implants. Needless to say, when I got them out, uh, I the first time I took my um, bandages off, it was like, you know, four or five days after my surgery, I cried for about... 45 minutes straight because it was the first time as an adult I've seen my body. I got my implants when I was 22 years old. Wow. So I had them my whole entire adult life. I've never seen my body and I couldn't remember what I looked like. So I got my implants out. I cried for 45 minutes. I'm scarred. I'm stretched. They don't, they're lopsided. Like <laughs> it was so traumatizing. Right. And for about a week straight, I cried every day, every time I looked at them. And my husband, he's, God bless him, he's so supportive. Mm -hmm. And he held me and he was like, Karen, it's okay. Like, remember your health. Who cares that you have yeah. scars? Like, yeah. that's cool you have scars because you have a great story to go behind it. And I think it was like a week into, he's like, all right, enough is enough. I'm giving you five more minutes to grieve and move on. He was like, get over it and start healing. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> tough love. And you know, it took me a long, long time to embrace my new self and my new body. This picture um, was, so I got my ex, I got my explant September, 2018. Mm -hmm. This was in June of 2019, I just went through a huge physical challenge. I did a 545 mile bike ride from San Francisco oh. to LA. Wow. Days. Not a cyclist. <laughs> and if I had my implants, I never would have been able to do that ever. Like there was no way I was healthy enough to do something like that. Mm -hmm. So this was literally like three days after the ride was done. And I was such on a different level because I physically did something that I was, I could have done a year ago. And yeah. that was the first time I wore a bathing suit since my explant surgery too. And I had a meltdown in the, in the, um, fitting room, trying bathing suits on. Cause again, it's the first time I have seen myself and I'm, again, lopsided and you know, like it's just, it was a lot to handle, but I put this bathing suit on and I really like that smile is authentic and true. Like I am so happy with how I look now. And you look so I cute. Love, so cute in that picture. Thank you. Yeah. I love my chest. And I, I say it all the time. I'm part of the itty bitty titty committee yeah. and I love it. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I'm so much happier now being so small chested because I think it fits me more. It's what I was meant to be. And I'm an athlete. That's my body. I have an athletic body and I embrace it. And I am so proud. Now I wear tight stuff and I'm flat and like I wear it and I'm like, I don't give a crap. I am so happy. Uh, but it took a long time to get to that point for sure. And it took sickness and implants 
for me to realize like how happy I am with my own body as its natural state. So, yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you shared all of that. The first thing I want to point out is that you did it while you were young and, but you were right on target in terms of the national statistics in the U S the majority of women that are getting the implants are between ages 18 and 35. And that's over 48% of the implants are going into that age group. And it's kind of like, we just barely become women and then we change our body. And um, so to, to take that and go back to the flat chest, there is a little bit of trauma. And I don't think we should take that lightly or brush that under the rug because you're not the only woman who's cried after that surgery and cried multiple times every time they get undressed, every time they step into the shower, they see the scars, they see the change in the tissue, and it can be really hard. So I'm glad you mentioned that because that's part of recovery is coming into that place of acceptance. Yeah, and I think it's also normal, and it's ladies, it's totally okay to mourn it too. It's a grieving process, you know, like I grieved on so many levels because I grieved the physical look of it, I grieved the emotional side of it, I grieved my health that, and then I had a lot of regret because I'm like, wow, I solely was responsible for all of my health issues for the past 10 years because I wasn't happy with myself in the beginning. And if I just learned to have embraced my body for what it was, I never would have went through this. So the regret was even worse than the image of it. But then you realize, well, you go through life for a reason, the way that you go through. And I really believe that part of my mission and part of my journey was to experience this so I can help encourage, support, and inspire other women. You yeah. know, I really believe that we all go through these things for a very specific reason. Like even with you, you're doing this because now you're interviewing all of us and you're spreading the word and you're going to be a, a, a source of of support for and resource for women. So I think we all go through this for a very specific reason. So that regret, I then learned to turn into fuel to support me and motivate me, inspire me. Like that, I share my story, not to say, look at what I've done. Yay, I'm awesome and I'm powerful. I share my story to show people that I'm human, right. I'm real. Yeah. I go through the same stuff you guys all go through, even though my life is up on a pedestal mm -hmm. with competition and in mm -hmm. my career, but I'm just like most women, but I've gone through it. And now I can be that support for you going through that and know that you're not alone in this process, you know? Yeah. And I love that you are willing to help people take them by the hand and you're in a position to help a lot of people. And I just want to let everybody know that's listening that you can reach out to Karen and you can ask for support and you can sign up to get coached by her and she can help you through the explant process so that you can get that nutritional foundation under your feet and regain your health. And the thing, um, before I have you give us your contact information, I just want to remind everybody, we are so lucky that the majority of the problems we've dealt with that are breast implant related can be reversed. There are a lot of things that the pe people do on this planet that aren't reversible. And we're really, really fortunate that you can have a surgery, remove the implants, and regain a large part of that health that has been lost. And so rejoice over that, move forward and be happy about that because we don't have to be hopefully on permanent medication. We don't have permanent disabilities, we hope. And if you have someone like Karen on your side, helping coach you through your recovery, I think your outcome is going to be amazing. So Karen, tell us how people can reach you. That's great. Thank you. Um, you can reach me on Instagram. My handle is Karen underscore Monetti. Last name is spelled M as in Mary, O N as in Nancy, E-T-T-I, Karen underscore Monetti. I'm on Instagram a lot. Just DM me. The other way to get in touch with me is just my email address. My email is Karen, so it's my first name, at thisisbodhi.com. My company is Bodhi. It's actually a Buddhist term, Bodhi. It means to enlighten from within, and that's really what our goal is to do. So the email is Karen at thisisbodhi, but it's spelled B-O-D-H-I.com. 
those are the two ways I am constantly plugged um, on my email. It's it's what I do most of my day. Um, and Instagram's great because then I feel that Instagram's more personal of a connection because I get to see the person. There's more interaction, so you can do that. If you don't have Instagram and you're on Facebook, my um, Facebook page is Karen Walsh Monetti. So those are the three major ways you can get in touch with me. Great. And people can message you and they can Skype call with you or Zoom conference with you. So nobody actually needs to live down the street or in the same town. You can do this from all over the world. And that's a, that's a really great resource. Thank you, Karen, so much for sharing your story. I will put in the show notes the link to your movie so people can hear the Thank details you. of how you got sick and how you recovered. And I will also link all of those um, ways to contact you so that people can get in touch with you. Thanks so much for spending your time with us. We really appreciate it. And you're really helping a lot of women. So, thanks. And thank you for doing what you're doing because you are, again, we're all in this together and we're all sharing our roles in supporting and really tackling this thing of BII. My mission and my goal is to just get women to stop implanting and be comfortable in their own skin regardless of how they look you know so we're all doing our part i really appreciate you starting this podcast and if i can support you in any way if i can help you let me know i am here for you and i really really appreciate you reaching out to me it's so awesome i'm very grateful for it so thank, thank you. you thank you have a great night thanks so you much. too bye-bye thank you for listening Spread the word by subscribing, liking, and sharing the Killer Boobies podcast today. You could be the person who helps someone reverse their pain and suffering and reclaim their health today.